I hear this from civil engineers and GIS users all the time. Architects and building engineers do not georeference their Revit model. They just work on 000, meaning a local or relative coordinate system. Hey everyone, Alberto here with BIM Lounge. And in this video, I'll be showing you why it is important to geolocate your project based on real world coordinates as an introduction to my geolocation series. From my experience, it is true that a lot of building professionals do not take the time to geo-reference their projects, probably because it's an extra step or maybe they recently switched to Revit and they have enough on their plate. Now, should you geo-reference all your projects? Well, let's go over some of the advantages and challenges relating to this, and hopefully that will help answer that question. So this is the intro video to the geolocation series, and it's intended to be an overview of uh, all you can do if you geolocate your project correctly. Now, I will be making a video for each individual topic, and you'll find links to these videos in the description. So there are a couple of uh, workflows that I use that rotate around the geolocation. And uh, one is the geolocation workflow, and the other one is the visualization workflow. Let's start from the geolocation one. Now, obviously, each project starts with a site, and the data necessary to create your site is usually built using a civil 3D file or a survey, and this data is typically CAD. But if you don't have this data available, don't get discouraged. You can get similar information using online imagery services like uh, Google Maps, where you can actually get an image and information about the coordinates. Now, if you have a civil 3D or a survey available, you can acquire coordinates from this data into your Revit model and use the actual CAD information or imagery as a background for your site plan. Now, if you have contour lines in your CAD files, you can use them to create a Revit topography from the CAD information automatically. Now, if you have access to InfraWorks, there are a few advantages to keep in mind. You can add context to your site design, and this includes having a fairly accurate 3D terrain with an aerial image draped on top of it, as well as conceptual massing relating to your context. You can also use InfraWorks as a visualization tool, as InfraWorks itself has the ability to render images and animations. But the way I use it is to export the InfraWorks model to rendering programs like Lumion and finish your visualization effort in those programs. And then of course you can leverage InfraWorks as a BIM and GIS data hub. So you can add that 2D position-based information from GIS. Think of utilities, the statistics about the neighborhood, and so on. If you do have access to RGS Pro, you can even take this to the next level and use RGS data in a 3D environment. So with RGS Pro, we have the ability to import a Revit model and create apps or web apps uh, for uh, augmented reality environments. Now, this won't be something that you would do every day, but if you do geolocate all your projects, you can keep this option open. And then, of course, we can uh, leverage the analytical power of RGIS applied to a 3D environment. In this case, using a 3D model in RGS Pro for applications like facilities management. Now, all this data typically doesn't have a good high resolution imagery. So in uh, pretty much each one of these steps, you can uh, easily add high resolution aerial imagery. And because you georeferenced all these steps, and because all these steps have georeferenced data, this aerial imagery can be easily imported and integrated in the design process. Now let's switch gears and talk about the visualization workflow. Now I usually use Lumion, but I believe these steps could probably be applied to other or similar rendering programs. Obviously what's needed in a Autodesk ecosystem will probably be a Revit site model. And within the Revit site model, you would have the architecture, structural, MEP, and all the other models. So basically, 
all the models linked into a Revit site model because that will give you the ability to do one export that has everything, including the site, into Lumion. Now, of course, as additional information, you would have the InfoWorks model as we described, but this time separately, so you can handle the changes to the context separately from the Revit models. And then, of course, you can add uh, SketchUp elements for additional entourage using, for example, sites like uh, SketchUp Warehouse. Of course, at this point, you could always use high resolution imagery. Now that you've seen the benefits of geolocating your model, let's dive into each one of these tools so you can see how to add value to your project. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And if this was useful to you, go ahead and watch the rest of the series. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.